Hello, my name is Sally Stevens, and I'd like to talk to you today about the lovely craft of English paper piecing and some of the products I really love to use when I'm enjoying sewing it. To begin with, you'll need, aside from all these lovely products, just some paper and some fabric, whatever fabrics you like. And I've got a little example here of what the finished article might look like. These are called hexagons. And this is traditional English paper piecing where a lot of beginners start, but also where people like myself that have been sewing for many, many years still enjoy to do. To begin, we start with our fabric and normally fabric comes folded in some way or another. So it will end up with creases on it. With this brilliant quilters cut and press mat, which is this size is perfect for taking to classes and being portable, but it also fits if you haven't got a very large sewing space. On your desk or table, and then this, I absolutely love and I use lots of this, Best Press Spray. It's a starch alternative, but it doesn't leave any white residue like normal starch does. And it comes in different scents, which means you can choose the one that you like best. So we start by just gently spraying the fabric all over. Don't need a huge amount and a bottle lasts for ages. Nice hot iron and we just press. And the advantage of this is that it makes your fabric a little bit crisper when you come to sew it, so it's easier to sew, but it doesn't make it stiff, it doesn't leave any residue, and it doesn't leave any nasty marks. But also if you've got really bad creases, which that's quite a harsh crease there, as you can see, it's gone. So having pressed it, we turn this quilter's cut and press board over to the cut side. And on this side, I'm going to trace around my paper templates which form the center of the hexagons that we're going to be sewing with just odd scraps of paper that's the template that goes inside but you can see we need a seam allowance around it so we have to fold the fabric over to give us a seam allowance we'll use the add a quarter plus ruler this is a 12 inch long ruler it's got 12 inches marked along one side and a narrow chamfered edge and on this side it's got a lip of plastic which is about a quarter inch which is a quarter inch wide and we use that to give us our quarter inch seam allowance to do that i'm going to use the sew line marker pencil this has a pink lead in it and once that one's run out which it'll last for ages you can buy refills as well the refills come in pink white yellow black and green using the outer quarter ruler with our paper template or a cardboard one if you have just gently draw along each side using the lip of the ruler butted up against the paper. Now one of the things that you can see here is I'm having to hold it down to stop it moving about. To make that a bit easier, what we can use at this stage and we'll be using again is the uh, sew line glue pen. The pens come with a, a blue glue stick in them. Again, there is a refill in the pack and you can buy more refills and they come, come in yellow, blue and pink. Using the glue pen at this stage, we can just put literally a little dab of glue on the fabric, press the paper down, and that means then that as we're using our ruler to go around, it's not going to come apart. And we'll be using the glue pen again in a minute to save time on a traditional tacking technique. So there's our hexagon marked out, and we're going to use these brilliant sew line snippet scissors. They come in a pack like this. They have a guard over the blade, which means both that it's handy for keeping you safe, and if you should drop them on the floor, they're not going to get damaged either. So it means that these really fine, really good blades, which cut right to the tip, will always be protected. And the more you protect your tools, the longer they will last. So we're going to cut this hexagon shape out on the mark lines which is giving us our quarter inch seam allowance. And I've already cut a few out in advance, so you don't have to watch me cutting out lots. So there's our paper template on our piece of fabric. And now we need to turn these edges in to secure them to create this effect so that we can sew them together. Traditionally, you'd thread up some thread and a needle and these sides would be sewn in. And that takes a little bit of time. It also means that when you've finished with it, you can reuse the paper templates, but they tend to get damaged, so you probably have to throw them away. Again, if we use the sew line glue pen, 
and don't worry that it is blue pink or yellow these dry absolutely clear they won't gum up your sewing needle or indeed your sewing machine needles and they won't mark the fabric they're non-toxic and they have no smell so they're brilliant for children to use as well as adults and what we're going to do is just turn in our sides with using the glue pen that's probably quicker than even threading up your sewing needle so there's your hexagon ready prepared ready to sew next we're going to sew the hexagons together so i have some prepared here that you can see and the hexagons are a good starter for for a beginner because they fit together so neatly and they create such nice arrangements that you can grow into whatever shapes you like traditionally you'd have a, a single fabric here and then you'd have the same fabric around the outside to create a flower effect and that's what's known as grandma, grandmother's flower garden so we have our, our hexagons already paper inside seam allowances turned over and ready to be sewn together when you're hand sewing it's useful to have some extra little products to make life a little bit easier and a bit more fun when you're using a thread and this one happens to be a metler 60 weight i'm using a red thread just so that you can see it a little bit more easily this product called thread magic is brilliant it's a kind of waxy product in this little tub that's similar to the kind of beeswax that used to be used years and years ago but it's much better it's much softer and it creates less build up on the thread itself the idea is that you pull your thread through this this thread magic and it makes it smoother less kinks in it and easier to thread and to sew with as well the way this little tub has been designed is really neat just pop your thread in between two of the little notches pop the lid back on and then you can just pull it straight through and what I tend to do then is just cut off whatever thread I want with the snippet scissors I've got the thread I need ready coated and my thread magic ready to go with my next thread for the next row of sewing so we have our thread all ready to go next thing we need to do is to thread the needle this is quite a, a fine thread which is absolutely beautiful but even with a large eye needle it can be quite difficult to thread so I found this nifty little ultra fine needle threader to be really handy. All you do is just pop it into the eye of the needle and then pop your thread in through that instead of trying to get it through the eye of the needle, which is really easily easy because you can see that it's got a big gap in it. And then just taking hold of the needle threader, just pull it gently through. And that is your needle threaded really, really easily. They're quite tiny these, so do look after them. What I sometimes do is pin mine onto my pin cushion so that I know where it is. And just as an extra little tip, I use my glue pen refill pot as a little needle case. So now we're starting to sew our hexagons together and this is just done with a simple overcast or ladder stitch. And all you're trying to do here is to catch a couple of threads of fabric from each hexagon Try to avoid going through the paper if you can, but it doesn't matter if you do, just to sew it together and therefore joining our hexagons. But when you're sewing this many hexagons together, that your pushing finger will also start to get a little bit sore. Needles are great things, but they are pointed at both ends. So one of the things I've discovered, these beautiful ultra thimbles. You can see perhaps by my fingernails, my fingers are quite longish. So I find using an ordinary thimble a little bit difficult. And also my fingers seem to be rather more oval shaped than round. And traditional thimbles are round, not oval. So I've never really got on too well with them, but this works really well. The idea is that you have a little metal thimble top and then these little self-adhesive discs, which are reusable. And I've got one open here, which I've been doing quite a bit of sewing with already. And I've only used the one dot so far. And it comes with a little piece of protective paper so when you're finished sewing just pop that back on now you put that on what's normally your, your pushing finger which in my case is the third one but where do you put it on your finger so what i would suggest is before you pop it on just sew a couple of stitches and they're just overcast stitches and you'll see a little indentation appear on your finger really really quickly and that's where to place the thimble now you can sew away to your heart's content and for hours and hours without any soreness at all and then just with a simple overcast stitch or a ladder stitch if that's what you prefer and just using the thimble to push through and there you have your hexagons coming together and that's English paper piecing. <laughs>